Let's go to Zoom now and speak to Dr. Iman Olefia, the Deputy Country Director, San Ghana. Uh, thank you very much, Doc, for your time here on The Pulse. We've seen all these viral you know, diseases ravaging our country, the continent, and indeed the world. Uh, from where you sit, uh, have we done enough to prepare for large-scale outbreaks as we have seen with COVID? And thank you very much, my brother, for the opportunity, and good afternoon to our cherished viewers. Um, in fact, you do not need uh, a prophet to tell you that as a country, we have not actually been up and doing as far as preparing for epidemics or pandemics are concerned. I mean, last year, we were all here we were hit by COVID. Even at the heat of the moment, we had a greater proportion of our population also dying from cerebral spinal meningitis, CSM for short. And this year, we are hearing, just last week, about 25 Ghanaians also died owing to yellow fever. At the time that we are still not so even out of the woods yet as far as COVID is concerned. The fact is that, yes, disease outbreaks are inevitable. They will happen. Uh, if you trace the history globally, we've had said pandemics happening. But what is important is for us to be prepared so that in the event that such things happen, at least we'll have ways to contain it. Um, for us as Sengana, over the, the years that we've done budget analysis, we've realized that as a country, although we have what is called a National Action Plan for Health Security, which is costed, uh, the government has not really sort of devoted or allocated money specifically focusing on financing the National Action Plan for Health Security. And if we have such costed plan there and it's funded, that is where, in case of uh, medical epidemics like that, that is where we have to take the money from. Um, following from the, the interview that you had with uh, the researcher, it is clear that Almost all our key research institutions that matter, the Noguchi and whatnot, are all funded by external sources. Goodness. And so the point is that if we wake up today and the external forces say that they do not have any money to give us, then what is going to happen to, to us as a nation? Um, COVID came, yes, we had some voluntary mobilization of resources locally, but a chunk of it, if you look into our budget, the media budget, and even the current budget that, that was read, if you look at it, a chunk of it came from um, external sources. So for us, our concern is that it's about time that government try as much as possible, not looking outside, but inwardly to try and allocate some resources for epidemic preparedness financing. For today, it is COVID. Tomorrow, we don't know what the future holds. It may be something that is more even grievous than COVID. Uh, government indicated uh, last, last year that Agenda 111, but we are not really seeing much of the Agenda 111. Uh, we thought that we had, I think last week also, that yes, plans are far advanced and they are put in place, but every time plans are far advanced, that's what we normally hear. We want to see action. Agenda 111 would not solve our epidemic preparedness uh, totally, but at least it will help to some extent. Mm. Uh, maybe uh, let me add one or two points to it in terms of what government could do. Aside the fact that we are calling for government to still prioritize funding for epidemic preparedness, we know that the budget is red. The budget is there. We exactly. Really and, I, and I was just going to come to that. Yes. So uh, we are still analyzing, but so far we've not clearly seen any specific item focusing on epidemic preparedness uh, financing. Uh, but that doesn't mean that um, maybe certain things done within the health sector may not uh, go towards that. But we have the view that it's very important government should have specifically focused on devoting some resources just to for epidemic Fairness financing. We well, think what could be done, even as we don't have much money, what could be done is being to broaden the COVID levy. That that came last year. Last year, government issued a COVID levy. 
maybe government should to broaden the levy to focus on general epidemic response. Mm. That will help. And there's also a call. We know that the District Assembly Common Fund, unfortunately, for the previous past year, did not, did not really uh, come. But there's a sense from citizens before the budget was when we went to that maybe we could also look at uh, trying to get a, some sort of proportion of the DACF uh, focusing on uh, epidemic preparedness financing and some of these things will, would help us. Mm, but, but Doc, it, it's about the constraints, is isn't it? Budget line. But then, please, sorry. It's, uh, it's about the resource constraint. You talk about the COVID levy, for instance. There have been, you know, concerns raised about that levy and how counterproductive it is. Um, you talk about also about the, uh, you know, the resources that go to the various districts. Uh, that in itself is an arrears for several quarters. And so, really, there needs to be a sustained, um, you know, source of funding uh, to get this to work. Um, do you have any suggestions in that regard? Okay, thank you. So, we all do understand, we know that there's a constraint in terms of getting the needed revenue. Uh, attached to GDP, we've always been saying it's around 13%. Government is trying to push it to 20 or so percent. I believe that is how come uh, this the 2022 budget, they came up with certain new in tax initiatives to rope in more uh, revenue. Speaking specifically to the issue, I think the epidemic preparedness financing. Yes, we do know that, yes, uh, already money allocated to health does not even meet the Abuja declaration. But we have to look, prioritize. Well, we seem to have lost uh, the sound there to Dr. Emmanuel Efia, who is the uh, country, deputy country director of St. Ghana there. Apologies. But I think uh, the point is well made. Uh, we need to have a more sustainable uh, approach to dealing with our uh, epidemics and pandemics uh, here in the country. And that's it uh, for the pause. We're taking a short break for sports. We'll be back to wrap up with the.